Welcome to the 9 News Trump Rally. Good morning, everyone. By now, you likely know that the state basketball tournament was canceled at the girls' semifinal round Thursday night due to the risk of coronavirus. That came before the city canceled all public events at venues such as the Denver Coliseum on Friday. However, we did still see some great action on Thursday, and we intend to show that to you right here because somewhere in there, there would have been a champion, and right now, well, they all are. So let's start with Class 4A. The first of the Final Four game came on Thursday, put Bertha up against defending 4A champ Mullen. They aim to return to the title game. Mustangs looking strong early. Haley Van Horn dishes it to Megan Pose. She hits the three on the other end. Spartans also testing their ability from long range. Allie Padilla throws this one up. Nothing but twine. That matchup good enough for overtime. Close game coming down late. Pose again, this time sends it over to Abby Webster. She sinks the impressive floater. Mullen will fend off Berthet's upset bid in overtime, 64-57. It, it doesn't get old. It feels amazing. It is definitely a team win. This team is really good, but we came out and we knew we came so far, so I don't think we wanted to lose. I definitely feel that there's a target on our back, but that has made us work a lot harder this entire season, so it's just motivated us more. Second 4A game put Green Mountain up against Holy Family, who lost in the final four a year ago. Tigers looking to flip the script this time around. Alyssa Wells put up a shot from beyond the arc. That bounces out. Cecilia Anarud, she's there underneath, gets the rebound and the putback. Next half, Rams staying close. Avery Oster turns to Jada Mays, open, pulls up. That three-pointer, good for Green Mountain. Our last highlight, it's a defensive one because this game remained close all the way through. Shea Murphy steals Holy Family's inbound pass, gets chased down. Tyler Whitlock with the block. Tigers win 38-31 over the Rams. <laughs> it feels amazing. I've never felt anything like this before. Uh, last year we made it to the Final Four and lost, and to come back and win is the most exciting thing ever. I'm so excited. We were so motivated because we know how it felt to get that far and then lose. So we studied really hard and we tried really hard to come here and win today. Highlands Ranch came into the tournament as the sixth seed. They faced the defending champs in the final round as the second seed of Cherry Creek looking to defend its title. We'll pick this one up in the second half. Bruins lead as they'll add to it. Casey Kyle sends a three-point shot from the corner on the other end. Falcons trying to stay in striking distance. Alex Pirog kicks it out to Taylor Ray. Pulls up from deep. She went off for a team high 17 points, but ultimately it was Cherry Creek pulling away late. Jana Van Geitenbeek, we've heard that before, goes on the fast break, lays it up and in. Bruins defeat the Falcons 55-42. They were trying to defend their title. Ranch is a great team. They're always, they've always been a good team no matter who's playing for them. Um, and so we knew that it'd be a challenge and we knew that whoever we played would be a challenge because it's getting closer to the state title. So we just had to come in, do our thing, uh, listen to Coach Evans and just do our thing and play. Last year, it was Cherry Creek down in Grandview for the title. Would the Wolves get their shot at redemption? Well, they'd have to get through Valor first in this sharp shooting effort from Kendall Weta. Beautiful from the corner. Then she dished it out to Jenna Seibert, who was way beyond the college line. Perfect to get her team up by one with less than four minutes remaining. But get this, Grandview sophomore Mariah Hudgens went back to back from long distance. That was from the wing. You see her from the corner. Wolves up and they ain't looking back. Grandview takes this one 49-42 and without knowing the unfortunate circumstances, hear how they felt about the hopeful rematch. We lost last year. It was heartbreaking. Uh, it's just what, what we work for. You know, we lost it early in the season and I feel like that's, that's what we want. We want our revenge, obviously. So I think it's going to be a different outcome on Saturday for sure. The Colorado High School Athletics Association was met with praise when it first allowed parents of the players into the arenas for the tournaments Thursday. When Chassa had to make the tough decision to cancel the tournament late that night, some of that praise turned to mixed reviews. I sat down with the Chassa Commissioner Rhonda Blanford Green to discuss that decision. It has been a wild 48 hours. Just walk me through this a little bit. Um, in the last 48 hours, we've just been, uh, we went from unless we're told by a state agency to, or a facility shut down, that we were going to advocate and continue with um, kind of our messaging from last week that we wanted this experience for our high school kids. And, and so it's kind of this uh, yin and yang, like you want the tournament to go, but there's a lot of great decisions being made by educational leaders, by people in the athletic space. 
Yeah. You don't know what that looks like, right? Until you're in a facility and you've got, what does that look like when you have no parents? What does it look like if you let four in? What does that look like for all of your workers and volunteers? How much exposure are you really bringing to that? And so I think even after the first day, there was some trepidation for some of us to say, you know what? trying to see what that checklist is and are we really meeting those standards and then what is our why and I think it just comes back to as educational leaders our why needs to put kids and 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 their well-being as well as everybody associate associated with that tournament in the forefront to follow up on that what do you say to those teams when they look in the history books and they see an asterisk next to 2020 the majority will not have a culminating event and as much as I know what I feel every day is that I fought to keep this event going and and I didn't want it to end this way this would not be the outcome that I would want but if it has to have that asterisk it's because decisions were made for our kids and for everybody a part of this tournament or public gatherings um, we acted and made decisions based on the safety and well-being uh, of anybody who would look to us for that kind of leadership in this uncertain time.